You've just entered the theater of an alien sky. If the words and images seem strange to you, there's a reason for this. Our world was once a vastly different place. To experience this won't hurt you, and there is nothing to fear. How curious this celestial monster called the Bull of Heaven, an archetype with origins in prehistoric times. When civilization began, the Bull of Heaven was already present in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, but the influence of the archetype extended far more broadly, with literary, symbolic, and ritual echoes continuing into modern times. In the ancient Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh, the bull is Gugal Anna, the great bull of heaven. The crescent form of the Sumerian god Nanar, the Babylonian Sin, shines in the heavens as the horns of the bull of heaven. A similar power appears in the Egyptian pyramid text in the middle of the third millennium BC. There it said people stood in fear and awe of the great bull Kenset with shining horns. The name is translated as the Bull of Heaven. Across the centuries, an archetypal memory was progressively localized through tribal storytelling and reenactment. We see the early tendency toward localization in the Sumerian and Babylonian accounts of the local hero Gilgamesh, slaughtering the great Bull of Heaven. The Persian Mithra defeats the Bull of Heaven on a landscape of uncertain definition, while his Greek counterpart, the legendary Theseus, vanquishes the Minotaur in the center of a great labyrinth localized on the island of Crete. And of course the Greek Heracles, the Latin Hercules, amongst his famous labors, slays the Cretan Bull, which could hardly be different from the Cretan Minotaur slain by Theseus. In due course, this celestial creature was progressively transmuted into local reenactments for popular entertainment. And what does it mean when we consistently find close by the beautiful princess, the literary echo of the mother goddess? Well, of course, the experts leapt to a conclusion, perhaps the only conclusion conceivable under common assumptions, Surely the crescent horns identify the celestial bull with our moon. But does the moon really give us the recurrent details of the archetype? It's ironic that the late 19th century scholar Peter Jensen, in his groundbreaking study of Mesopotamian astronomy, De Cosmology de Babylonia, unequivocally identified the Crescentine god Sin as the planet Saturn. What could this mean? These discourses are exploring the unexplained origins of ancient symbolism. And that includes a revolving crescent that could never be reconciled with anything in today's sky. Most fundamental was the crescent's direct connection to a central star around which it turned in a daily cycle. An unrecognizable daily cycle was once celebrated around the world. We've discussed this crescent in its relationship to the pervasive myth of a cosmic mountain or pillar. It was this concrete relationship that gave to the crescent its mythic interpretation as two outstretched arms revolving around a central star in opposite twin-like phases of growing bright and growing dim. By its direct linkage to the axis pillar, the resulting celestial form inspired the mythic image of a pillar god holding aloft the sphere of heaven with outstretched arms. Heaven meant the planet Saturn, when Saturn appeared as an immense sphere in a gathering of planets along a polar axis close to Earth. 
We've urged viewers to always think in terms of diverse, even contradictory mythic interpretations, all pointing back to the same underlying forms, a pillar god with outstretched arms and a horned pillar identified as the bull of heaven, a form whose evolution over time becomes clear as we give attention to the origins of the archetype. But these were just two of several mythic forms tracing to the same pillar and crescent. And if this is so, it is only reasonable to follow the predictions of this reconstruction into the concrete details of a global accord. Here we can observe first the original human experience of concrete forms in the sky, and we can observe how in later times when the celestial forms were no longer present, all that was left were the mythic interpretations. In this case, a pillar god or goddess with outstretched arms and a great bull with shining horns. Could it actually be that the bull of heaven with its immense impact on human history was nothing more than a pillar surmounted by a star and crescent? The Egyptian text called the Litany of Ra invokes this primeval sun as shining horn, the pillar of Amentet. And here are the words of the Egyptian pyramid text relating to the mythic bull Kenset. The pillar of stars, the bull of heaven, whose horns shine, the well-anointed pillar, the bull of heaven. One celestial form with two radically different mythic interpretations. One is outstretched arms, but another is shining horns. That's the direct and testable prediction of the Reconstruction, an invitation to follow the ancient evidence wherever it leads. And that will mean other mythic expressions of the same underlying form. Due to the abundance of testimony on the subject, We'll return with more details in our next episode.